Hello, YouTubers. This is another session where Sam and I continue our uh, exploration and development design for OData Neo. And in the last session, we talked a little bit about exploring the using the uh, uh, dynamic expression using C sharp uh, scripts, you know, and basically building C sharp, you know, syntax uh, as a string and then just running it. And, you know, there has been, you know, some back and forth, you know, Sam and I had a little bit of discussions. He was trying things out. It worked. It didn't work in the morning and then it worked at night. Right, Sam? Is that what it was? Like during the day, it didn't work. And then at night, it works. <laughs> so how are you doing, my dear friend? Great. It's not okay. related to the, the whole project. It's just uh, um, um, one part. Yes, just one part. <laughs> just one, one, just one tiny part. Okay, so this is where we were last time. We basically went and said, you know, uh, we're gonna create, you know, a bunch of expressions. I even did a couple of like um, uh, testing. So I basically put the expression part in terms of performance. You know, undoubtedly, you know, you know, building the expressions is a lot faster we already know that just for the people like you know I, I heard a couple of comments from a couple of folks they said oh you know what does that mean for performance but you know o data queries you have to also understand you, you know you don't need to pre-optimize like you know how big a query is going to be you know in order for you to stop worrying about performance at this point right because you know you're having let's say your query is like you know 30 30 components 30 blocks you know that's still minuscule and really doesn't count for anything you know if we're actually processing 30 40 60 million records and our code is actually supposed to process that and you're getting a performance degradation that would be a good case but if you're just processing a query that's about a couple of a couple of lines that really doesn't matter at this point in time in terms of performance we also want to make this maintainable like expressions are great but expressions are hard to understand you know you have to know that in order for any piece of software to survive it's going to have to be easily rewritable and easy to understand right sam here like i like i said last time this guy is a seasoned enterprise level engineer that's producing you know kind of you know uh, core libraries that are going out there you know for millions of people out there that are using it right but can we take that genius and put it mainstream? So any junior engineer out there actually can look at the code and be like, I know what this code is doing. What can I do with it? You know, and that's the whole point of this entire endeavor, right? And open sourcing this and building it in the open source and having all of these discussions. Sam, I think this is our, you know, 50, uh, this is my dear friend. This is our 50, 50, 56. This one here is 57, 57th session, Same right? Thing right so so and 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 for the people watching these sessions it, it's been just a wild journey because at the very beginning the very very first couple of sessions i was talking to sam and uh, uh michael pezo which was a, a, a which he was he's still an architect on the identity team at microsoft and then we talked to the uh, uh standardization folks and then sam and i went to understand how really OData, he was really explaining it to me, how OData works today. A lot of people from the community came in, they started talking to us and telling us, okay, here's our ideas and stuff like that. And now we're at this stage where we're saying, okay, we have almost everything we need, right? We just need to take these O tokens and turn them really into uh, uh, into these expressions that can actually produce, that we can actually take it and produce it, you know, and can apply it to any I queryable or I enumerable, whatever the case may be. Just to confirm, Sam, before I ask you a couple of questions about, you know, whether you have some notes on uh, the the dynamic expressions, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just confirm what I have because, you know, honestly, brother, I I don't not I do not know why it wasn't working with you, but I'm gonna change this to expression here, expression like this, and I'm gonna make this my run, and I have everything going on here. I'm gonna put a breakpoint here and I'm gonna run this. Because Sam and I like had this weird thing, like why did it work while we were doing the session, but then it completely froze and it got stuck. Yeah, there it is. Do you see the, do you see the expression? It's sprinting the expression. It works. It works on my machine, Sam. So that's that's all I care about. Uh, it, 
it works it works at my side it works on your <laughs> side too okay yeah, so tell me uh -huh. mm -hmm. So now ahead. it's now it's your turn, my friend. Tell me what you learned about this. Any any kind of gotchas, anything that you saw in there that made you think, oh, you know, maybe that's not a better option or anything like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, Hassan, last time Hassan assigned a uh, homework for me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just move a step as uh, you know. A step in human uh, for me is a step, big step for human. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, it's mm -hmm. a joke. Um, so um, I tried myself to um, to uh, rebuild the similar code and move it forward to uh, EF or EF call. Yeah. So it seems to work with a basic scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I, I, it's it's never stopped to investigate yeah. the many things. Yeah. So let me share something. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sam. Uh, so window. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a similar uh, code. Uh huh. Um, compared to the previous session. Yeah. Um, but to be remember, always uh, the uh, assign a variable for any yeah. any function call, because <laughs> it. it it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> always yeah. create a new instance to return. Right. So last time I didn't do that. I just uh, call add reference mm. and the result assigned to the option. Options. That's, that's a bad idea. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> if you want to use that, remember to assign to a variable and use that in your func. Func. That's right. Um. Here's a, it's a similar thing, but here I uh, uh, move it forward using the um, um, multiple properties. So it's, it's the same thing mm -hmm. for expression and return the expression. Mm -hmm. So here, yeah. so the call like this one is a credible, it's credible from from where the credible. Yeah. Yeah. Credible yeah. So customer is in memory date is a list and the call as credible and use that. Mm -hmm. but, but based on my test, so we don't need a sample data, just a, a type. Yeah. So we can use that to yep. build an expression. Yep. Um, after the expression build, I Cause expression on the uh, EF contact. Mm -hmm. So count customer contact uh, is an a, EF, a yeah. local, uh, my local uh, my MS database, uh, yeah. local DB. Yeah. And uh, um, uh, yes, here's the date. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. So we explore. Copy this one. So here's my table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. I, I can see you double clicked on customers, right? Did something yeah. pop up out of that? I click the show the table date. Okay. Is it showing so, anything on your side? So here's a is a is a date sample data of customer. Oh, there you go. I see it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Just just sample data. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Sample date, and the in memory is just the John and the Peter. So yep. only two customers. Yep. But uh, in the uh d database, yeah, uh, I have I double double duplicated the customers. So I have That's four yeah. customers. Yeah. 
And you can see I also append EF XY to distinguish. So I have the uh, expression. I can execute the expression on the customers. Mm -hmm. So I can run it. You can see. Oh, you can't see that. Mm -hmm. uh, can I switch to a window? Yeah, you should probably share the desktop, Sam, because the if yeah, you're gonna open up a, the yeah. desktop. Yeah, go for it. Uh huh. Uh, there you go. So here's the result. Nice. So it means I can um, uh, it's dynamically uh -huh. on the uh, different uh, source. Yeah. So so expression is just a generic expression, mm -hmm. and uh, um, uh, we can input anything, any source mm -hmm. to execute. Yep. Um, what is this OData so, select, Sam? If you go to it, uh, oh, it's data. just a class. So I'd no. like to build a, a generic uh, OData query. It, 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 it's it's a it's a it's a homework to investigate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, I yeah. want to do the same thing for OData the filter. Yeah. To, but it seems um, it's a little bit to uh, um. Um, I mean, more work to, to finish the. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you don't. You don't have to do that. We just want to cover the select scenario, you know, yeah. and kind of build an orchestration service for it. Yeah. Um. So here's a it's cute async. Mm -hmm. So it seems uh, if we build the expression like this one, it's a call select. Mm -hmm. It's it's written a master call expression. Yeah. So master call, so we can get the method info from the call, best call expression. Yep. And the second argument, yep. sec second argument for the master call is a is a the, 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 font the, expression, yeah. is a lambda expression. Yep. So uh, I can retrieve the lambda ex expression and uh, it's easy. So I have the master info, I have the source, I have the lambda. So I can invoke it. that method on any source yeah. and return the result. So it it works fine. Yeah. Um. Um. Mm. Yeah. Uh. So I just stop here. Yeah. That. Yeah. This is this is a good point. This is a good uh, checkpoint. You know. Uh. You you even went you went above and beyond because. <laughs> you know, we were we were just getting the expression. You went and said, "Okay, how do I apply this expression to an actual data source?" You know, yeah. as you usually do, very diligent. Huh, go ahead. To go make ahead. sure we, uh, it it can work for the end to end scenario. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. So we uh when we finish the investigation, so we can move on to use that in the audit new project. Yep. yep. And to build a whole solution. Yep. Um, um, yeah. So that's the current state. So, so, so your 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 conclusion so far is that mm -hmm. this works end to end. We can actually generate an expression. We can apply this expression to a data source, and it's actually going to work. So can... yeah, so far it looks it looks good. Okay. And uh, um, I don't know the performance um performance, I, is bad. performance. I, I, I did i did so you did <laughs> yeah so if you um, run, uh, uh -huh. another part is um um it's just for the select mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh i don't know what's what will happen for other queries so right. uh, we need we needed uh to move on to test other scenarios. Yes, but you know, so so remember, we're doing this horizontally, meaning mm -hmm. that 
we're just covering select now to release an alpha release on 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 newgate.org for other people to start trying this scenario on their side do you understand so instead of going kind of you know there okay there's an article that i want you to read okay there's an article that i want you to read it's really really important i'm going to take your screen for a second so mm -hmm. some you know probably a month maybe two months ago you know i wrote something called modern modern patterns and software de delivery i will send you that link and i'll give it to people kind of in the chat and you know the thing is sam like how software engineers deliver software sometimes they go and deliver entire blocks entire uh, uh, vertical blocks like these and that makes the project take takes a very long time right what we're doing my dear friend is that we're going like this we're cutting through like this so we're going from exposure to logic to integration right so we can do the select end to end and then do the filter end to end and then do the compute end to end the good thing for you here that i want you to know about is that we can now do some crazy things, you know, that doesn't require too much implementation like search, right? Search will be very easy to implement. Why? Because you already, you don't have to think of it in terms of expressions. Someone already did that work. Like the folks that are doing link, system.link, I don't know whether they're in building 27 or, or something, you know, uh, these folks, the .NET folks, they already did that work. So we don't have to go and rebuild that expression. Instead, we're just gonna piggyback on top of what they're doing and then extract the expression out of it. The benefit for us is that we can go now and say, hey, literally anybody out there, let me actually send you the link first, Sam, because I want you to take a look at this. I really need you to read this article because this is beyond software architecture. This is more like software strategy, right? And delivery, right? So here's what we can do, right? We're gonna do the filter and all that. That end-to-end -end scenario that you did, we need to productize it. Like we need to bring it out there for something that anybody can use, whether they want to use it in a console application, ASP.NET Core application, use it in, you know, whatever they want, right? Whatever the case may be for this library. So here's the plan, my dear friend. Let me bring the uh, architecture for uh, OXT, and then I'll tell you here, OXT is, is, is Odata Next or Odata Neo. Um, what we gonna need to do here my dear brother is the following so here's the deal sam i never ever save my architecture it always stays in my head and then i have to do it over and over again so do you remember how we basically went and said i have an odata orchestration service and this odata orchestration service was gonna go and talk to uh token service tokenization service and then there is projection service. And then there is O tokenization. O tokenization service, right? And then we have something in here called O tokenization orchestration service, right? Because that's the guy that actually does the work. All of this is done. This is all test driven, exception handled, all the magic, right? The second part that we want to do here, Mr. Sam, is a service another service that's going to be sitting in here and this service is going to have multiple facets like multiple uh, ways for interaction so what we're going to need to do here the, the the part that you and i have been just working on right now is something that's called expression service so this is a service that takes in a an o token array and returns expressions to us are you following me? So there's expression service. There is a, a, a O data query service, right? And then we will have maybe something else. We will determine that part, you know, whenever the time allows. I won't even worry about it right now. I'll just go like this, right? And this guy here is gonna be the uh, 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 O transformation transformation ser orchestration service. Okay. On top of all of this, we're going to have a coordination service. And this coordination service is the one that's going to take in, literally take in something, an OData query, and return. So this is coming in as OData query, 
right? And this is your OData coordination service like this, okay? And this coordination service, my dear friend, is going to go like this and go and say, give me this as tokens. Let me hand it over to this transformation orchestration service. This transformation orchestration service will go and say, give me the expression service. Give me the expression for this. I just want an expression, right? Now, you and I at the top could go and say, we need something to sit on top here that goes and says, apply this expression to a data source. Are you with me? Yes. So now if you're applying it to a data source, and, we, and we're going to need to think a little bit about that because I'm not quite sold on injecting the ASP.NET controller. I think there is something more that we can do about this. Like if the controller itself is just giving us that data source, I queryable coming from wherever, I know you did the you did the real magic there. Like it's not even visible. It's right. It's all doing it underneath. We will talk about that when we get there. But what matters now, my dear friend, is that we need to go and build this expression service, Sam. And this expression service is basically something that takes in literally all it does. It takes in an O token array and transform it into an expression. That's it. The tricky part about all of this is the type. Does it need to know the type? Of course it does, doesn't it? Huh? The type. Or which you? type? So the return type or the input type? The the type of the the type of the items in the in the I queryable. Input the type. It needs the type, right? The input type, right? Yeah, from the order the query, there's no type information. I know in input. Yes. So the query like uh, dollar select equal name. That's right. So that's the order the query string. We there's could... no information about the query. Right. And so, um, um, but we can make the API to accept a parameter or, or generic type mm -hmm. to accept a type. Let us to build the expression. A generic type, huh? And then build the expression based on that generic type, right? Mm -hmm. But but uh, the question here is, it mm -hmm. will error out, Sam, right? Because if mm -hmm. you go and say, here's here's the problem. If you go here, let me pull this up. If you go into, and I think this is probably something you and I need to think about. I mean, we could work our way around passing generic types downstream to these services. Do we have to? That's the question, right? So right now it knows about this generic type because we already told this globals thing, hey, you have a student type, right? Yes. The question here is, what if I passed in, uh, let me ask you this. What mm -hmm. if I passed in dynamic? There is no type. If I applied the expression that comes out of this to the uh, to the uh, to data source that doesn't match the type, does it work? You can build and run. <laughs> let's let's find out. I think it's gonna break, Sam. Yeah, it says. And uh, object does not contain, uh, well, what if I, mm, yeah, it's basically saying, I don't know what this name is. I, I don't know how to look for it. Yeah. Uh, what I mean is um, if we back to the audit new, so mm -hmm. we will build the APIs for customer to call. Yes. yes. So that API can accept a generic type. And then let it transcend down. Yeah, that. let let the type, uh, the any any caller should provide the type yeah. to call this call this uh, API call our APIs. So they are but, they are mandated to kind of provide a type. That's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who is it? Looks, it? It looks like Muhammad Dior from Uzbekistan. <laughs> say, say his name again. Yeah, Muhammad Dior. Am I saying Muhammad. your name right, brother? We probably freaked him out, you know, because he saw the link in the standard community and he was like, yes, he said, yes, right. That's my name. All right. I guess he can't talk. He's just listening in. That's oh. okay, too. <laughs> okay. So you want to pass the type downstream. Is that what you want to do? Okay. 
I think we could also do that. We could basically go and say, okay, let me let let me pull out uh, OXT real quick and see how that how that's gonna work. OXT, uh, Odita Neo. Okay, let's try this out, Sam. It might work out. Just experimentation to see is it gonna even look right. We're gonna need a broker for sure with this one. I want to abstract away. Uh, the dy the dynamism of the expressions that are coming in, but we'll yeah. come back we'll come back to that in a second. So here's OData Neo. So you basically want to go and say, let's see here. Let's start from the bottom instead. So we will basically need to go and say under services foundations, mm -hmm. we need our expressions expressions service, right? And the expression actually O expressions because we're doing O data specifically. So I'm gonna call it O expressions. And then I'm gonna build an interface for this. Just trying it out. <clears throat> IO expression service. Right. And then <clears throat> let's see here. So this is public O expression. So you basically want to go and say, I'm going to allow a, a certain type to be passed in here. And then we can go and say, I'm going to return an expression. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And this here is a, a, a generate expression, a generate expression, right? Expression. And this guy will take in an O token array as input parameters. Right, so this is actually it's just O token. So this is input O token, like this. It should then, be a array, right? No, remember they said we need to have a root token, and the oh. root will have everything, right? I can't remember that. It's a couple months ago. Ah. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. All right. So you're passing this generate expression. So if I go here and say, give me the I think this could work. So, okay, O expression. Shall we put the generic type for the method? For the method, you want to put it on the method? Not Okay, we could do that. Like, you want to do it like this. Yeah. And then, and then take it out from here. Yeah. Yeah, that works too. Why not? Yeah, go back to the before the implementation. Yeah, so then then we can go and say IO expression service, and this expression service will have this, right? And then we can go now and basically go and say, so ideally we need a broker, Sam. Like this broker is going to kind of abstract away this external or native code into a different place. And we could start from there. We could basically go and say, here's my, actually, let's, let's do that, Sam. I think we have about 20 minutes. We could do that. So... Okay. Let me Where do is Muhammad? Muhammad Muhammad just got scared. He he walked away. He's like, I don't know what these guys are doing. <laughs> I th I thought I thought they were going to be speaking Uzbek, but they spoke English, so I don't know what to do now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's I have to say though, like these guys, there's like some amazing like uh, I don't know if you know about this, but the uh the standard community, this Discord channel that, that we go to. Uh, they basically picked up the engineering standard. Oh, by the way, I need to give you a copy of my book, of my new book, The Standard. They basically picked it up, and they're going out there and translating it into different languages, right? You might actually appreciate this. Let me show you this. I was showing it to my friend Kailu yesterday, and he said to me, you know, it's not too bad. I can actually understand it. Sam, does this, does this look um, readable to you, like high level? Does this look? Let's see. Does this look like something you can understand if you would read it? Uh, that's just Chinese. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. So my book, the standard, is translated into different languages, right? And who I, did that? A, a, an AI-powered system. Oh, <laughs> AI-powered system. So the original book is is the standard, like our. Um, I, our uh, engineering standard that we're using, this guy. That's the original book, right? And then Tim from uh, from Germany, he basically said, hey, you know, I'm with this company that actually does translation. Like if like if you read this, Sam, does this make sense to you? Mm, it, it's better for me to understand. 
Okay. <laughs> so, so, so make so, sure the translation is correct. What What is this saying then? Um, Zhongzi. Um, uh, I think it mean? means it's, it's our goal of a mission. Mm. Something like this. Okay. Okay. What about this this sentence here? What does it say? Uh, I think it's a it's a sentence to summarize the the goal. The goal, okay. Yeah, so so there's many of these. Like there's French, German, Spanish. You know, all these different translations for the engineering standard. This is literally. It's it's like the paradigm that powers how we build software. So when I go to you like this and I say, "Hey Sam, here's a foundation service, here's a, an orchestration service, accord." That's what this is. We're basically reflecting our engineering standards and guidelines. Okay, not to deter. Can, can you share the Chinese version? Oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna send please? it to you right now. <laughs> please please take a look at it and tell me if you. Uh, so so you know there is a there is actually a a channel. In, in the standard community called translations. Like the channel itself is just called translations. So let's see here. I'm gonna send this over to you on in this here. And then I'm gonna say Samzu soup standard and Chinese. This is this is simplified Chinese, Sam, not the not not the not traditional. traditional. Yeah, and I and I and I just learned from my friend uh, Kailu yesterday. He told me that the traditional Chinese used to be right to left. You read from right to left, right? You the right to left and the, the uh, top to top bottom. To bottom. Right. And then the simplified is more like left to right, right? Yeah. Wow, interesting. Okay, so it's in the channel. You can see it, right? I just send it to you in the Discord channel. Uh, the translation, if you want to take a look at it, this one here. Okay. If you have any suggestions or you you have any ideas to fix it, please help me out. I want to. I want. I want. You know. I know in China there's only 10 million people that speak English. That's one percent, <laughs> right? What about the other? You know, over one billion people. I want them to know the standard. I want them to learn the engineering standards. I want them to be happy. Okay. Okay, Sam. Let's go back to. Uh, let's go back to Odata Neo here. And let's let's do this. So we have services. I'm gonna create create a new thing in here, and I'm gonna create and I'm gonna call it brokers. And under brokers, I'm gonna create. Sam, do you want me to increase the font? Hmm. You want me to increase the font? Uh, it's okay. Okay. So expressions uh, expressions broker, and then under this guy, I'm gonna go and create a an interface i'm going to call it i expression broker so this broker just abstracts away the the work that that this dynamic component is doing i hope it works sam i don't know we'll see this is the real stuff this is when you're actually bringing these ideas together right so expression broker and and what this guy is supposed to do is really just give us an expression that's all we need from it so we're going to give it a method that says generate expression and it's just going to generate an expression for us so <laughs> excuse me so this is an expression right and then generate expression and we're just going to give it a string so this is this is here link expression because the service is going to take that o token and transform it into a link string you know what i mean like that the o token that's coming from upstairs from the orchestration service the the expression the o expression service is going to take that o token as input parameter and transform it into an expression so it's going to turn it into a string it's going to flatten it out you know what i mean so okay. what's the link to expression string here this here, so the O token, okay, so let me explain. The O token is coming in as a a one big, it, it has children, it has an array in it, right, like this. 
And this array is basically going and saying, here is your, uh, why did I do, one sec. Let me show you. So the input from the service is the O token. So input is O token. What does this O token look like? It basically has a thing called children. Right? And these children has the types and everything. So it has like type, right, uh, is uh, operator. Right? And it has value, right, dollar sign select. Right? And then inside that guy, it has children. Right? And these children have their own thing as well. So these children in here, it has type property like this, right? And it has the value name. That's the input to the service. This service is supposed to take that object and turn it into this. It's supposed to turn it into select x new x dot name. And that guy will be the input in here. And then this method will give us that as an expression. You don't like it? No. Okay, why do you not like it? No, I like it. No, you like it, okay. Yeah. So, so this is what this is. So now on this level, my friend, we can basically go and say, okay, here is my expression. Oh, this, this is a generic method, right, Sam? Because it's take, it takes in a type in it, right? And now I have this expression broker, right? Which will implement I expression broker, right? And in here, we need to add this implementation. So let me go steal the implementation, make it really pretty for uh for our service let's see here sam <clears throat> here we go so i'm gonna take this whole we can copy the code yeah i'm gonna copy the code okay like this okay so this will be the t right sam and then we can basically go and say this here is just a new list we don't care a new list of t right because we don't we don't care that it has data not just yet yeah can we using mm. using the t in the in here in the script yeah why not yeah it's but okay. we can we can test the letter so let's yeah. build, build the global class first Let's do the global class, right? So the global class is not going to be, be sitting here. It's going to be sitting under models, right? And we're going to go here and say, I want under models, there will be expressions. And under expressions, we're going to have something called global. We'll see if it works, Sam. I'm not sure. Public. Right. And this guy, control K E. Global takes a, a T type and then also the Iqueryable. Iqueryable, right? Um just trying okay, so it's basically prop Iqueryable of T and this is data source. Right? So if I go back here, I can oh it's called globals, not global. Okay. Globals. Globals. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And then I also have in here the script options, which uh, we need to install. Do you remember what library it was, Sam? Uh, this, uh, uh, Microsoft dot analyze and uh, C sharp C sharp and and uh, script scripting. Okay. C sharp script. Scripting. Yes, sir. Code, anal code analysis, C sharp. The third one. The third one. 19 million downloads, Sam. 19, 19 million. million. It must be included in some library, Sam, because people are not just going to download this by itself. Like, this is 
a bit too advanced for that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is C-sharp, C-sharp script. All of this is good and dandy. Now we need to make this an async value task expression, right? Because it's uh, it's an awaitable, right? So that means, what does that mean? It means, well, this guy's expected to return an expression. So we're just going to take this and say return. This, this, is, this is a very uh, sequential uh, uh, operator. This guy's returning... An expression is it actually of just type expression, Sam? That's all. No, it is? Uh, 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 type expression after the run async at line thirty three. It's a generic type, generic master call. No, uh, after run async at thirty three. At line thirty three. So line thirty three in here. Run async after run async. It's a generic function call. <laughs> Give it uh, it's a it's expression. Like, like, expression? yes, you want me to do expression here? Like yeah. this? Yeah. Oh, really? You can yeah. do that? Mm. My man, I did not know that. Yeah, now you, you know that. Now I, <laughs> <laughs> I okay. learned it from homework. Yes, you did your homework. You did your part, man. You did your part. So this is link expression that will get passed in here. And if it's empty, then there's nothing to return. And we're going to actually throw validation exception if there's nothing being being done there. We're going to need to think about that a little bit. But uh, if I go back into the interface here, and I think that's, I think that's it. Now I just want to test it real quick, like a, like a quick test, OK? So what I'm going to do, Sam, is that, OK, well, let me just rebuild this first. Let's make sure it builds at least, right? If it, it builds, be. if it builds, that's a good start, right? OK, um, I'll just I'll just go ahead and try to test it real quick, right? So what I'm going to do brokers. Yeah, the brokers. So I just want to know that this is working end to end. Like brokers themselves, they don't need unit tests, right? Because we're basically using foundation mm -hmm. services to kind of test that. But what I want to do is that I'm gonna go write like just a dummy. Like I'm just gonna take like a like a like a test class in here, mm -hmm. just for funsies. I'm gonna add a test class, broker test. Just something to kind of check with and see. So this is here a fact. Right. And this here public void actually async task should return expression. You're going to delete that. We're just this is just for you and me and expression broker equal new expression broker. Broker doesn't need anything to initialize, which is great. And then we have <laughs> look at this thing. Look mm -hmm. at do you see the AI? Um, yeah. let's see. So so expression broker dot generate right. expression of type student, right? And I'm gonna go and say select a student new student dot name. So that's what we're passing in to this guy. Right, and that's an awaitable. Well, if that's an awaitable, then generate expression should be called generate expression async, because that's the best practices for this, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go back here, and then let me just create a dummy a dummy model public class student. Uh, 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 let's see, a prop string name. Prop. GUID. I put that in there just to make sure that it's actually doing the select and not kind of playing around with me. Okay. So, so here's our test, my friend. This that's coming, this is actual expression. That's what we expect to come from the other side. And my dear friend, we expect that, um, uh, let's see, this is link expression. There you go. Okay. So just assert a uh, true actual expression is not null. This is just for, for us to put a breakpoint here. But then mm -hmm. I'm going to do control RT. And let's see if that works. If that works, I'm going to be very happy, Sam. You know that, right? 
Yeah, but we have a, a certain not norm why we should be using us. Oh, it's it's just it's just a gitch. It's like I'm trying to stop the the test to see what it. I'm not really testing a value or anything. This is gonna fail. You know why, right? This is supposed to close like this, right? <laughs> Let's try this again. Control R T. Mm, I'm not getting anything. Let's see what happened here. Control unit test broker. It, throw an exception. And what the exception is, oh, do we need to add? Well, we do already pass. So what's the thing? Data source does not exist in the current context. Are you missing a reference or assembly? Ah, uh, the other thing that I didn't tell you about is that putting globals in here like this, it doesn't like it. It has to exist in the same place where the class is. And I have no idea why. I have no idea why. This is something you and I are going to need to think about. No, no it's... it's just wait. Not in the same file. It's it in, in, the in the, under the same namespace, right? Same namespace or same... Probably. Probably. So let me try it like this now. We're going to put it under the same namespace it needs to. I think it's stupid, but let's let's try it out. <laughs> stupid. Yeah, it's really stupid. Huh? Anything? So the test failed, and it says ah, the name data source does not exist in the current context. So it's looking at this guy, and it's basically saying I don't know what this data source is, even though we pass these globals in to this guy. Does that mean I have to actually move this inside here? I think that's a problem that I ran into last time. Let's try this again. Debuggle. No. Um, Are you sure? Yeah, at my side, I define the globals out of the class. Okay, let's see what the problem is, Sam. Uh, the name data source does not exist. Compilation error exception. So it doesn't like that data source, new list. What are we missing, Sam? What are we missing? It might not it might not be liking so much the uh, the generic type. That's also possible. Um, link expression looks good. It looks good, right? Uh, data source any in, in typo? No. Let's see. Data source, copy, copy, paste. Oh. Data source here as well. No, it's all good. But okay. And because it works in the console app, right? So this guy, okay, let's see. Should return expression. Uh, yeah, it's it's trying to run here and it's saying, I don't know what this data source is. I don't know what this data source is. Is it because Let's see, is it because we're calling it from a different assembly maybe or something? We'll see. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try something out. I'm gonna go here and say, let me take that student model, just just playing, playing cool. I'm gonna go into the... Oh. Uh, huh. It could be the student model, right? So we can go here. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go here and say, okay, take student, take student, take, 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 take student. Okay, let's do it this way. I'm just trying to kind of poke around to see what could possibly be the reason behind it, right? Mm -hmm. So so let's just go back here. I'm just going to put an object here because we're not using it, actually. And then debug. Let's see. If that works, then we have we have a big problem. Ah, oh, it works, Sam. So it doesn't like that your model is coming from the outside world. It doesn't like the transcendence of models, basically. Do we pass the model as an input parameter? Would that help? Let's just at least see if the expression that's coming back is correct. Let's see. Quick watch. Arguments. It's correct. It's correct, right? But the type is not a good. Okay, so hear me out. I'm going to put this as a draft PR because we're at time. 
And what we're going to do, my dear friend, is that let's let's investigate this. OK, I'll create a, a, a draft PR homework, so, again. homework for both of us. Right. If we can't pass the type, we can't move forward. And this is why I was asking you, do we have to pass the type? Right. So let's let's take a let's take a, a quick, you know, kind of investigation until Friday on this. And then we'll connect Friday morning and then we'll see what what the deal is. Does mm -hmm. that sound like a plan? Yes. Yeah, right. uh, send the pull request yes. changes yep. to the GitHub. Absolutely. You bet. I will talk to you soon. OK, thank you so very much. I appreciate your hard, hard work on this and I appreciate your genius. OK, we'll get this done together. Right. I'll talk to you later, my friend. Take care. I will read your Chinese version of standard. Yes, read the Chinese version of the standard. Yes, please. And tell me if you if there's anything we can do there. And of course, and you can share your uh, English version book again and let the community know that you have a wonderful book to share. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll do that. <laughs> and of course, for the people watching us, you know, I hope you found this a little bit interesting. This is just mostly this is how engineers actually really work in the real world world in the real life we don't have the answers and we keep looking for things all the time until we figure it out sam could, has <laughs> could at real time yep yeah, between the real me, session but between me and sam we have about 30 40 years of experience in the tech industry right and <laughs> we still look things up right thank you all so very much um if you have any questions comments concerns please feel free to drop a comment in comment section Give a little bit of compliment for Sam because he's doing a lot of hard work and he's doing a lot of things, a lot of great things. And uh, I'll see you in another session. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, Sam. Take care. Bye-bye.